<laughs> Yahoo Sports Fantasy Football Vanilla Thunder Productions. Oh, Here we are playing? again. We're not doing a baseball quick take. No, oh, no, we're not. Boy. Although I, I gotta say, I am looking forward to your up your your future fantasy football videos um, because oh, yeah. I will be watching with great interest. With popcorn in hand. That's right. Look at that um, guy with his headset on, talking to himself. Uh, we ended last week with, uh, with or last, last week, week. <laughs> last, the last video. We wore the same clothes <laughs> last week to match what we were doing a week ago before the draft had taken place. We ended the last video with uh, with speculation on how I would choose to fill my slot. Um, <laughs> That's dirty, gross. This is uh, about fantasy football. Perverts. And it, it, was, it was interesting because we talked about Heinz Ward last time, and I decided yes. I decided to use my eighth pick to pick up Mike Wallace. Um, I'm Morley Safer. I'm Leslie Stahl. This and Andy Rooney tonight on 60 Minutes. I've been wanting to do that for years. The, the fact that his name's Mike Wallace, <laughs> I you know I could have referenced the NASCAR driver Mike Wallace, but I'm nobody would have gotten that. So. Just um, like Troy got pissed when I referenced uh, Earthquake in one of our wrestling videos. <laughs> That's right. I went there again, kids. <laughs> Um, so Mike Wallace, you know, I, who knows what kind of year he's going to have. I mean, who really knows? He's, I, I actually, um, since I drafted him, I've ended up moving him out of my starting lineup. Um, I, I'm kind of, he was one of my, well, he was I one don't of the, think I would start him any of the first couple of weeks until, you, A, until, you see how he's used, and, and B, back. until Roethlisberger's back, because I don't think this team's going to pass a whole lot. If Leftwich really is the week one starter, this team is going to struggle passing-wise. Uh, I used to be a Leftwich fan, but he just doesn't have it anymore. I think Dennis Dixon is the better quarterback. That's a debate for another video, but yeah. I don't think that, you know, just like me picking Heinz Ward is, has a lot of low, uh, you know, downside to the pick, Mike Wallace could have a breakout year or yeah. could have a ton of downside. Yeah, one of the two. Um, however, I'm very happy with my follow-up for, for that one. My ninth pick, I, I, I grabbed uh, Greg Olson. The uh, the Bears tight end. I was kind of looking for, I was looking for a way. I had Cutler. I have Cutler as quarterback. You're looking for a way to have 18 Bears on your roster. Just admit it. <laughs> well, there was that, and there was also, there was also. Uh, I was kind of looking for someone to combo up with Cutler because that can be lucrative. Yeah. And um, the problem is, is that all of Cutler's wide receivers are so low. In the draft order. Nobody knows who's going to be the wide receiver. <laughs> that by the time I got to my ninth pick, I was like, well, I could take Aroma Shadu, but it would mean going down a ways. So I decided to grab Olsen and, and, and fit him don't into the Don't reach on a Bears slot. wide receiver. I'm just going to throw that out. Yeah, please don't. Don't reach on a Bears wide receiver. Don't reach but on Johnny Knox. I know Olsen, there's a lot of, Olsen's you know. a quality tight end. Yes. And if this team is going to be versatile on offense, Olsen has to be a part of that. I know, and I know that Mike Marsh doesn't like to use the tight ends all that often, as much as other other coordinators do. But I still think Olsen is is a talent that is going to come out, and um, I'm pretty happy with with grabbing him, frankly. Uh, you know, especially since, especially given the sort of the sort of slightly less questionable nature of Finley at at at, uh, at the tight end position. Yeah. So I'm glad I have. You two. got two decent tight ends. Yeah. Obviously, um, you learned your lesson. <laughs> you know, last year I didn't have any tight ends and I didn't have any running backs, so, you know, fuck all of you. <laughs> you had a really good kicker. Yeah, I had a really good kicker. I had John Carney. Ooh. And then, I, and then yeah. Garrett Hartley. And then I got good, good Garrett Hartley. Uh, I had a really good defense last year. That's how I won the few games that I did win. <laughs> Three? Um, I think you went Four, through. five. Oh, no. It wasn't five. It was five. Um, I'm going to look. Okay. <laughs> um, Let me get my spreadsheet. Let's just see here. Then you follow that up with picking the New York Jets defense. I wanted the best defense. Yeah. <laughs> I figured if I was going to hurt at wide receiver, at this point I'm saying, you know, wide receiver could be a bad place for me. I want defensive points. The Jets force turnovers. They create all kinds of craziness on the defensive side of the ball. So I wanted the hands-down favorite on the, def on the as far as team defenses go. Yeah. Um, let's see, as far as, far as, uh, ah, yes, my, or no, your, your, your next pick was, uh, James, uh, Laurinaitis, Laurinaitis, James Laurinaitis, um, also, known, also known as John. Johnny Ace, no, um, also, John also known, Laurinaitis. no, shut up, also known as Johnny Ace, who works for, um, World Wrestling Entertainment, and, uh, 
No, that's his son. Oh, okay. God. Sorry. Um, Too many chair shots. Laurinaitis. I don't even know who he is. Who is he? <laughs> He's the son of John Laurinaitis. So I've been following him since college. He's actually a phenomenal uh, linebacker. And when I picked the Jets defense, I decided, you know what? I'm going to put some value into the individual defensive players I picked because Patrick Willis last year was averaging like 12 points a game uh, at linebacker. So there is value in individual defensive players. Oh, yeah. I said, you know what? Oh, I'm, yes. I'm not going to have a crappy group. Now, the Rams are terrible on defense, which means Laurinaitis is going to have to get a bunch of tackles. I think he's going to be allowed to do what he wants to do on that defense. They're going to play to his strengths because they don't have any strengths. And uh, Laurinaitis is a great player. He was great last year, and I think he's going to improve on that this year. Oh, right on. I hope that works out for you. Um, no, so does I, John Laurinaitis. Yeah. Uh, for, right after that, for my 10th pick, I went with Ahmad Bradshaw. Um, I need Not Farouk and Bradshaw? No, no, oh, I'm not. I Brad went there Josh. again. Oh, oh, another wrestling reference. <laughs> um, and I know that I know that you know. It kind of killed me picking a Giants running back. I think the Giants are gonna suck. Um, so I really don't like this pick. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. But that's you know that, that's more your gut intuition than anything else. That's, I kind of a gut hurt. I kind of agree with you, but I think that Bradshaw is gonna see more carries than Jacobs. I think they're. I think they are, from what I've been hearing, they're high on him right now. Um, and, and you know, I, I, I needed the backup running back that didn't have the same bye week as Turner or, <laughs> or Turner or Matthews, which you I kind of this... fucked that up, actually, now that I think about it, because he does have the same bye week as Turner. Oh. Um, but that's okay, because well, I also... you could do what some people um, do, called buy stacking, where you intentionally pick all your players to have the same week off. Now, what that means is you're basically forfeiting a week or relying on all second and third string players to win that one week. But for the rest of the season, you're at 100% strength. Right. So that's not a really bad thing. I think what I figured is that during week eight, when the Falcons and uh, and uh, the Giants both have a bye, I was going to th- throw Michael Bush into the uh, running back <laughs> place and then to get a wide Yeah, well, whatever. It's a bye week screw it. I'll explain uh, my theory with with bye weeks when we get to uh, my backup uh, quarterback pick. <laughs> yeah. Then I went ahead and picked a defense, um, which I sucked at San Francisco. Great defense. Think, yeah, I think that... They're going to have a better chance to succeed this season, I was, too, in that I, division. I was really stoked when they came, when, when I well, was able to get them, because I think they're the, the lowest... The, the, on, on the the player the player rankings, they're the lowest ranked that I think has the greatest chance of doing well. So, well, can't have Green Bay this. or or the Jets. Or, the Niners are going to get to play Sam Bradford and the Rams, so they're going to kill him. Uh, you know, if, schedule, if Seattle great doesn't schedule. bounce back, they're going to get to crush Seattle a couple of times. Matt Hasselbeck has been uh, interception prone and sack prone, so there's points there. And Cardinals the Cardinals are playing liner. When you're looking at picking a team defense, look at who that defense is going to p- play the most yeah. during the season. That you know, the the Jets are going to be playing the Bills twice, and the Dolphins turn over the ball a lot, and the Patriots showed some some unfortunate uh, you know weaknesses last year. So yeah, uh, the, the you know the, the Niners as a pick there, not a bad idea. Yeah. Um. Let's see. And then I needed, or well, then you needed uh, Jerome Harrison, apparently. Or no, I'm sorry. No, you need Curtis Lofton. Curtis Lofton. Uh, I think he's going to have a pretty good year. The Falcons are going to step up this year. I think they make the playoffs, uh, especially if Matt Ryan can stay healthy. If Ryan had stayed healthy last year, the Falcons could have done some damage in the playoffs. I think. I think Lofton on their defense is going to be a, a huge part of their defense. He's going. I. I think he's going to return. Just as many points as maybe a second or third wide receiver on a lot of weeks. Um, I, I had Lofton last year, uh, and he was like the crux of my awesome defense. That was all I had last yeah, year. Yeah, dear, you were um, defense last yeah, year. Yeah, so I'm I'm all about Curtis Lofton. I think it'll be great for you. Um, and uh, finally, for this one, you then went and did select Jerome Harrison. Um, did I? As your twelfth pick, you did indeed, oh, well. sir. <laughs> He'll be fine. He's, That's about all you have to say. He's a solid return. And again, I didn't want any. We're giving him the backups side, at this so. point, so you know. Let's talk some more about backups in part three. We'll do.